The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. And uh, in the spirit of Christmas, we got the points out over here now. So we're going to ramp up maybe a Christmas tree a little bit later as we get uh, into next week. I'm going to splurge. <laughs> Go cut one down. Um, and I've got my Christmas lipstick on today, so that's good. Guys, uh, oil. Oil's kind of running the show here. And we're going to look at it immediately. And we're looking at our January contract, and we're just going to kind of start from here, and then we're going to kind of transgress down into uh, some of the things that are, that are being affected by the latest plunge in oil. So... This is today's price. This is real time. And what we're looking at here is really no end in sight. We talked about yesterday, the day before last week, as soon as we started breaking down below this, if you guys are just kind of joining us from shows, we've maybe already talked about this. I'm just going to do a quick review. When we close below these weekly profiles, very, very powerful. Go back and retest. Those are strong, strong, high probability setups when that happens. Um, on the short side, so we, you know, kind of break lower, then we go back and retest, and and you know we always look for turnaround situations to start nibbling or, or, or hints of something we can take advantage of, and there's no new profiles attempting to appear here. I'm going to go into my scanner just to kind of reiterate this what I'm saying, and go into the future section, and I go I'm going to go up to uh, WTI crude, and as we, you know, no mystery. I mean, as you can see, we're kind of red across the board here in the cells, and there's those five weeks that we've closed and been below profiles. Here's our current landscape view. There's the uh, inflection points that we're pretty much going to have to power back up through. And, you know, the neat thing is, is if we can get back above 37.54 and at the same time start showing some yellow bars here, which will mean yellow peelbacks in – our WTI crew, just like we see on uh, sugar here, just like we see on the Japan Nikkei 225, just like we see on the 60-minute silver. Don't get uh, too excited about the 60-minute silver showing a new profile attempting to appear, by the way. As we talk about on this show all the time, the longer-term inflection points are, are much more important than some of the shifts that are going around on the short term. So as we look at crude oil, uh, there's nothing – there's no yellow – peelbacks happening, which are saying, hey, we're going to have a new balanced area, a new demand area, in this case with crude oil, and it's just not there yet. So we want to see breakage of some of these inflection points, namely that 37.54, while at the same time some of the peelbacks here, and then we can start nibbling and maybe even have a retracement back up into 41.03, which is a daily unfair low, which is we never really even went back and tested that. So, um, but right now, you know, should you step into crude oil and start shorting it? Um, you know, my opinion, no. We've, we've, if you haven't been in this trade already, you kind of missed it from uh, 43. And uh, even though we had some opportunities on the long side that we talked about trading off of this 43.43 and almost reaching our targets up top, as soon as we started closing below, that was kind of off limits for the long side and wait for signs. And we haven't got any signs. Um, so do I like shortening the hole down here? No, I think I would pass on it. Okay. All righty. Okay, just reading some stuff in the den. We're going to keep hitting it here really quick. We're going to take a look at the 10-year because, you know, we hit our targets the other day on the interim on the uh, on the on the intermediate and we backed off all right so that was a nice little situation we talked about getting back above 126.0102 and now we're kind of crowding this again so uh, the market down obviously is kind of that inverse nice little relationship with the treasuries but you know what do you do with this now 
you know, considering, and I'm going to throw a little bit of a 10 to 15% fundamental talk into here. We usually stay away from that, but you know, Yellen is, uh, not exactly on the trigger finger, if you know what I mean, or trigger on, or finger on the trigger as far as raising rates. All right. And to get somebody to raise a quarter point is like pulling teeth seemingly. So they've kind of done this scene before where, okay, the market's not doing very well. That has actually affected their judgment market being the U S stock market. Forget everything else that's going on, any economic report, whatever, or inflation fears, obviously the commodities have kind of tempered all that, but this type of action in this U.S. stock market, just, just if you can kind of grasp this, it's ridiculous. But just barely coming off, you know, 2100 or whatever we've come up to recently and not really even having even remotely a significant pullback, they may come in and say, oh, my God. Uh, either we can't raise rates now or we're going to raise a quarter point and we're going to really, really watch this thing because we never, we might ever, never raise rates again. All right, so what does that mean for the 10-year and the 30-year? In my opinion, in normal situations, you know, they've got a quarter point, another quarter point. They gradually do this, and in, in their state of mind, by their track record, um, it, by no means, in my opinion, would they ever go in and just all of a sudden raise a half a base, you know, 50 basis points like Greenspan or somebody else were doing. Those were the good old days when the market moved around a little bit, which was nice for all of us. Um, but right now, uh, I think you've got still a, you know, pretty bullish stance on treasuries and you're trying to find reasons to buy instead of sell based on, in my opinion, these things should be lower. Um, so all things considered, <laughs> To get to my point here, uh, 126, 23, 24 breakouts above that area, in my opinion, are going to have to be bought. All right. Um, this is the March contract in the 10 year. Um, I'm going to just throw up some weekly numbers, too. I'm going to go to the scanner and I'm going to go into the uh, 10 year down here. I'm going to show you, these are in decimal form. Not It's very difficult for us to make an exception to put fractions in here. So you're going to have to do the math. Um, I showed you the math on the on the charts. But the top of this box, which is where we're at right now, we're at the top of the profile. But as you can see, that trend arrow is down, right? As we flip above there, what's going to happen is the trend arrow on the first bar may switch to up but that's you know going to be considered a breakout and if you go into the breakout section here and i'm going to pull up my custom sword here i'm going to get rid of the s and p's and i'm going to go into the futures wow there's nothing breaking out that's uh oh we're looking at futures and commodities of course there's nothing breaking out <laughs> There's some stuff breaking down here, though. Let's just get rid of that again. Huh. That's weird. Okay, so we've got some instruments breaking down the intermediate and long term, and that's what this sort's about here. So this, these are some of the definitions on the custom sorts when it comes to just putting it in. I don't know if you guys have seen this. I'm trying to show it on the screen right now. I hope you guys are seeing this. In the new build, you, you guys don't have this in your build. I'm kind of testing this today, and some people are banging on the keyboard trying to make sure it doesn't break. Uh, we'll be releasing this later today. You'll get an indication right here in the notifications window, and also it'll probably pop up on your screen. And as you see, these things shift around as they qualify or don't qualify. And what the def definition of these breakouts are is basically getting clean and clear of the noise levels of the unfair highs or unfair lows on the weekly and daily. So so if we look at the Australian dollar, um, oh, I mean, the Australian dollar futures, that's on there. Let's, let's actually go back and get rid of this. I want to see if the Aussie dollar is currencies. Yeah. Okay, it's not on there. All right, so let me break out. I don't know why it's going back to the uh, S&Ps. I'm going to talk to him about that. Hmm. Okay. All right. So that's the situation on the 10-year, and I'm looking to buy breakouts 
in a nutshell after I've rambled for five minutes about it. 126, 23, 24. All things considered. Uh, we're going to go down into gold really quick. Um, and we're going to just kind of take a look at the dollar just so you guys know what the landscape is there. Uh, eh, talked about, I got stopped out of this a little bit. We talked about it yesterday, about trying to buy uh, a day or two ago, 97.89, them's to breaks. Now we're kind of going back and retracing back up into that area. And I'm going to show you this on the scanner really quick here. Go back to my features section. And I'm going to find my dollar. I forgot where they put that there. Okay, so see that bottom? That We're, we're kind of retracing back up into that. There's seven days on a daily below the daily profiles and retracing back up into that weekly unfair low. So right now, today's Friday. We're going to have a weekly close. That's a fact. And we're going to pay attention to this. I don't know if you have a lot of leverage here right now. I'd like to see this thing get back above 97.89, 97.88. 97.90, excuse me, and and close above there, then I'd love to use that as support. I'm not a big fan of going short the dollar right now, even though we're kind of we're tracing back up into that powerful inflection point. I see you guys talking about the RAND in the, in the room there. Um, I've got a really, really good friend in Pretoria. Um, he's actually a partner of mine on some things we do that have nothing to do with trading. And you know, I don't know if he's loving this or hating this. I know he's got some money in some banks offshore, but this is the deal in South Africa. Maybe Basil can tell me if this tell you guys if this cha has changed. But they used to have a kind of a law there. You couldn't send, I think, more than fifty grand a year. It was either I don't think it was fifty thousand. Maybe it was fifty thousand rand. It was either fifty thousand rand or fifty thousand dollars. You couldn't expatriate out of the country uh, more than that per year. If you, I mean, so if your money's stuck down there, if you're a citizen, you can't send it out of the country, I guess, to maybe possibly uh, have it in a in a perceived more secure situation. So uh, I'd love, Basil, if you're listening, maybe you can comment on that if you know something about that. I'd like to know if that's changed and actually what was the uh, the level. But I was I, that was foreign to me at the time. I was like, you can't transfer money to another bank offshore that's that's weird way back it was dollars and it was 1.6 but that was changed a lot okay thanks thanks basil um all right well guys we're going to go to the first break and uh we're going to come back we've got the ppi at 8 30 and uh we're going to talk about the chinese one getting devaluated you value excuse me NN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry powered by the acclaimed Taz Profile proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. So, uh, devaluated is a new word I just invented. Sorry about that. <laughs> I meant safety value. Gold. We wanted to take a look at the dollar before we got into this and silver, so we're going to hit these really quick. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so 1060, obviously, we talked about if you're going to try to nibble on this, it might be good to just wait till we get to one of these inflection points down below, or of course, again, get above that 1089, 1090 area that Larry's been talking about too. Um, cause I'll, I'll listen to his show directly after all the time. I don't exactly know, uh, some of the things that have been said on gold with, uh, Steve and, uh, Basil and, um, Andy and David, I'll just go through everybody and Daryl. Uh, so when we, and Tom, Tom is, but Tom's the master of this, so I'm, I just kind of leave him out because he's got the gold newsletters and he's beyond my mental strength when it comes to trading gold. Um, so obviously we've pulled back into that support instead of broke out above 1090. So right now it looks like we have hit 1061 and this level is 1060. So I'm going to call that satisfied. We bounced a little bit here, but we're right in the area and I'm going to pull up my 240s here. There's that 1060 on the 240s also. So if you're going to try to play around with this, um, you know, I'm, I'm a little more bullish on the dollar than bearish. Um, you know, a weekly close below that 97, 80, 89, or what, what, what was the number on the dollar? Let me go back to that really quick, just so we all know this. 97, 89. If we cl we're going to have to have a weekly close above or below there. You know, and get out of the noise area today for me to get some bearing on what that might do, which would also affect this product. And, um, you know, what do you do with gold? So 
I, I, it seems to me that every time, I mean, we've had some blips, like, uh, let's see, we had a rally actually back up into that. Let me just make sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, almost hit that 10. It got into the neighborhood of 1090 backed off again. So it seems to me that the relativity of gold kind of going sideways when the dollar gets killed, which should have, you know, just by the correlation of repricing itself should have forced it to rally almost. Um, last week we kind of came up into this area, reached a high again of 1088 retested it backed off. So, you know, what do you do with this now? I think you've got a chance to just do some day trading around this 1060 area, but since gold doesn't seem to really get that excited as a dollar gets devalued, not devaluated, um, that's concerning. So, you know, I don't know if this is like a back the truck up situation. You've got a little bit of a fence to lean on here, but if we start, and especially if we get a close below 1060, that's going to be very, very bad today. But again, I think, you know, we've come off a little bit here. You got a chance to kind of do some day trading, use it as a fence, put stops below. And uh, that's what we're always looking at here on the show is, you know, put trying to put some odds in your favor and get some edge, so to speak. Um, but I don't like the way gold's acting. We've also talked about this thing going to $1,000 an ounce just to do it anyway. So that's the take on that. All right. So <laughs> I think we've covered all the usual suspects. We want to get back into, before we talk about the S&Ps, after the next break, we want to look at the Canadian dollar. This is something I just, this is just a runaway freight train that I don't think has any any targets right now. Um, as we looked at this, Tom was out, Tom, we're talking about on his show. If you've been watching my show, you know I've been a fan of buying support on this thing literally since the one, when, do we, when did this thing start breaking out? I think we started talking about it as a buy issue around 120, and then we tried to buy support all the way up, and we've got a little bit of a scary moment getting back down below 129 lately, but now guess what? We're above 136, and that was you know, continue to buy, continue to buy, continue to buy when you can. Here's the daily situation now. We talked about that, you know, things on their highs go higher. This is a prime example. Um, dollar selling off and this currency relative to the dollar not backing off at all in its devalued state, not devaluated, was a telltale sign that it was still on the launching pad, spinning around to possibly go even higher, and oil is actually pushing the issue with this thing. Uh, the Canadians dig holes, and they sell what's in the hole. I mean, that's kind of like an Australian thing, and, and it's a South African thing. So the RAND, the Canadian dollar, Aussie dollar's hanging in there, but we talked about the reasons for that. Um, and when we come back from break, we're going to finish up with this. Get to the Let's talk a little bit about the Chinese currency. trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to tom o'brien's daily market letter market insights tom o'brien's daily newsletter market insights comes out every market day at around 9 30 a.m and provides tom's daily commentary on the broad market including the dow nasdaq and s p plus specific trade recommendations there's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity he'll give you the entry price price target and stock price of each stock and option trade with Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's true. Life is all about choices. At EverBank, they're making it easy for you to make a smart one with this special cash offer. Open a new yield pledge money market account with funds from another financial institution or deposit new funds into an existing yield pledge money market account and you could earn up to a $500 cash reward. 
And if you're opening a new account, you'll also get their new higher six month bonus interest rate along with their yield pledge promise that ensures your yield will always be in the top 5% of competitive accounts at banks nationwide. Open a new account or add to one. It's your choice. To qualify, you must meet balance and other limited time offer requirements. Go to everbank.com forward slash TFNN for details and deposit options or speak with one of their banking specialists at 1-855-750-4051 for more information. You must act by December 31st, 2015 to be eligible. Everbank is a member FDIC. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content Content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the markets opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up to the date, active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. Something John said in the den right then from Philadelphia is so, so true. I mean, I kind of was joking about it. It makes, it makes me want to cry when I hear it. It, it it just hits home. I mean, you know, things can get away from you when you're trading. This is about taking wins and taking losses. You know, I mean, it, there's no other way to look at it. And those losses, keeping them, you know, again, this is like a broken record. And there's like a zillion books based around this concept. Let your profits ride and cut your losses short. I mean, it's easy to say. And uh, when you look at something like gold, um, and I think John was mentioning gold and silver here. I just want to go back to it really quick. Um, you know, you always try to say, okay, when you enter a trade, you want to say, okay, well, I mean, the, the first thing that I do now, I mean, I didn't used to do this in my early career, and it hurt a lot, um, is, you know, where's the uncle point? You know, where where do I, where where's the defense, you know, go into action? So, uh, you know, any good football team is based around, a lot of times, well, it's changed in the last couple of years, but uh, defense, defense, defense. I mean, the Bears, a couple other decent teams have built a entire dynasty around that. But it, on trading, it's it's you know play defense. That's the first thing you should be thinking, not playing offense. So you got a decent risk reward scenario on gold, in my opinion. Talked about playing around at least on a day trading level, not getting, not falling in love with the position, if you will. But you've got a ten sixty area to lean on. I'd you know maybe give it four four points traded a little light lighter and then you know where's your targets up top uh you know this 1090 area is huge but that's that's a that's a very big move for a day trading situation 
You've got 66 sitting up here, which is the top of the box on the 240s. We haven't exactly got up, got down into 1060 yet, but uh, we'll probably have a little noise around that area. So, you know, let's just do the math. Um, let's try to put a, a, a risk reward of two to one in force. And you've got 68 up here, top of the profile on our 60. So, you know, 66, 67, 68, maybe 70 and uh, a four point stop. So, you know, you do the math. That's about a, that's about a 2.5 to one. Uh, I like to actually look at trades that even have a lot better than those, but that's kind of a day trading situation. <laughs> Jay, you gotta, you gotta keep the day job, man. Just keep, keep it. Just suggestion, not advice. We don't give advice on this show. I'm just kidding. Oh, that's that's true. My, uh, I hear you. Okay, so uh, the Australian dollar. Let's take a look at this one because I'm I'm kind of really, really, really liking this trade. Um, it, it's had some volatility lately. There's no question. But I, you know, I love how this thing's holding up. Uh, we talked about getting a pop again off 71. What was it? 7169, 7170 to 70, 7192. Guys, this thing's holding up very, very well. Um, kind of like, not like gold, but um, let's see, what would this be? Okay. The inflection point 7169 to 7190 up there, that was a collection area before we looked at it. Um, there were some reasons we talked about with the navigator down here showing a divergence. There's all the things in the world, in my opinion, Sitting out there, the oils, the commodity scene, the China slowdown, which the Chinese currency now, they're, it's like, a, I think, I don't know what the year it is, but it's, let me go back here. I'm going to pull up the figure in just a second here, guys, about the, let's see. Excuse me. Lowest level in four years. Sorry about that. Uh, against the dollar. So at 6.4515, I mean, what, you know, Australia, very Chinese dependent country. There's only like 24 million people that live there, by the way. So things, you know, don't get buffered very well with a large population and a lot of things that have to kind of slowly digest um these are things that happen really really quick in in australia when they happen uh reactions and market reactions because they it affects things immediately so this not actually being affected as badly as i thought it would be affected as far as the currency getting devalued um i'm still a big fan of buying this uh, buying this and i think we can go past 74.40 on this australian dollar trade okay so let's go into the S&Ps really quick. Uh, this is the March contract, and I'm going to pull up our dailies here, and I'm going to let you see the, the March contract. It doesn't always work out like this, and we have to – I'm not a big fan of doing the continuous contract because a lot of the – you know, how do you marry – in a chart, how do you marry uh, – new crop corn with old crop corn. I mean, you know, when they transition, it's just, I don't, and you know, just don't think that's very valid. Um, and when we do these raw contract, <laughs> when we do these raw contract calculations to do the profiles, they are what they are. And we have a lot of different platforms out there that we deal with. And we found that this is really the only way to, to go because the continuous contracts also uh, are they function differently on different platforms and some of them do roll dates differently. Some of them, you know, it's just all over the board closes opening of bars, things like that. So the raw contract is something we tried to use just to keep things consistent. We've also done this on, on our packages that are on different. Um, and by the way, two twenty eight twenty nine is this unfair loan our daily on the S and P's on the December. I'm going to go back to my, uh, March contract and this contract, very similar situation, 2021. Um, we've actually got a function now, and it might be in here. Let me check it. In the indicators. Uh, let's see. 
I don't want to enact this. We got some, uh, where's it at? I don't have the latest version on here. We, we've got, because this is the server, um, we've got a section on here where you can actually check and access data and, and run for highs and run for lows and POCs from the database that's running the scanner right within your charts in case there's some anomalies happening with that platform's data source that's populating the platform. Okay. All right, here we go. So, again... We're at a daily unfair low here around two on the March contract, which I think we've rolled to 221. Uh, the breast situation, this is pre-market, but we're starting to get some activity here to populate this. Let me, uh, let me make sure here. We're looking at our uh, daily scene on our heat grid for our breath calculations across the globe. If, if you can see this, there is nothing escaping this move down. And this was like this yesterday afternoon. Columbia, while wow, we were talking about that, got its head above water on the very short term. Um, this is our 60-minute. This is our four-hour. This is our more important daily here. Uh, there's a little explanation. This is the latest version of the scanner. So, again, the intermediate has rolled over. We talked a little bit about the, the – daily chart, which you get a little bit of a leading indicator if you kind of monitor what's going on in the middle ground, and that started evaporating and converting over before this thing crossed over. So, you know, <laughs> we've had some moves down before, guys, all right, and they've been met with furious buying over the last six years. Don't forget that, all right? That's all I'm saying. We've got a, a market that continues to catch a bid no matter how nonsensical it is in your mind or sometimes in my mind um we've got an inflection point here we hit it yesterday or the day before we kind of bounced off of it i don't like the way this thing's gravitating back down um 221 on the march contract's a big number here's the weekly we had a we had a we basically had uh, a similar profile on the march as we did on the december and then we output it a little early on the March contract. That's what this is. So right now we're coming back into those that collection area between the POC on the weekly, which is about 2002, which is a big number, and the unfair hire on the previous box, which is 2013, it looks like. We've reached a low already of 2020 today. So um, you've got some decent, decent support. Between on the long term basis, between let's just say 2000 and 2020. All right, that's going to, you know, be something that the market's going to have to contend with and shorts are going to have to contend with. And we're probably going to have a bounce there. Um, considering that the weekly uh, breath is really not showing a lot of signs on a long term basis, we've still got a big, big, you know, amount of the stocks trading in their weekly profiles here, almost 50% of them. So, uh, that's the situation on, on the S&Ps. Let's go back into, you know, the short term, actually, and figure out if there's anything to – hold on just a second here. We're bouncing a little bit off that 2020, 2021, but, you know, what's the targets up top? Yesterday, we reached a 2071. I'm sorry. That was the day before. I'm sorry. There's something happening. I'm mixed up here. Day before yesterday, we reached that 2070 area. God, my charts are. Hold on here, guys. Okay. So, day before yesterday, we had that uh, violent reaction we talked about. I think with a 40, was that a 40, 43 point range? 27. Oh, my glasses. I got it too. Okay. 43. Yeah, 43, 44 point range. That definitely that that's the type of thing where, and, and when we reverse like that, those are those are types of moves that, you know, when you see that happen, that has gotten a lot of people out that were trying to get a free lunch on the short side around some of these inflection points below. Now, um, you know, what do you do with this thing now? I'm kind of with. Uh, I, you know, the 2045 area was a place to pick a battle before. Um, I'm not opposed to picking a battle at this 20, 
2020, 2021 area. Um, just because it's a major inflection point for day trading, do you have a lot of leverage on the long side here? Uh, we're gonna have to wait and see. A Friday close is really today's Friday. We're gonna that's gonna clear the air pretty much on the S and P's. Have I missed a lot of this pullback myself? Yes, I have. I'll just admit to you that this has been something I you know we we had that key reversal. I played around this on the short side. Um, tried to hang in there, but just didn't see a massive amount of edge there. So that's something I've personally actually not taken advantage of very well. Do you have an edge down here? I'm with John on this. You got a major inflection point controlling the risk. You can pick a battle around 2020, 2020, 2020 2021. And long term, guys, you've got a collection area now to about 2000. Uh, the yen trade, we talked about this. This is kind of death right now. You have to wait and see what the dollar does on that one and hopefully get back above 122 and a half to start even thinking about that trade again. So the yen trade's over. I'm not a big fan of shorting it yet. We're going to take a look at Shanghai really quick. Um, this is something, you know, we caught some good bounces off those big numbers, 33.12. Uh, looks like they're going to have to do some some re entrenching as far as government intervention on this. So, you know, I think the world's, you know, this is something a little unsettling, not as unsettling as the old price of oil. And as soon as I'm going to go back to this right now, because guys who missed the first part of the show, we're going to have to catch up here. Um, as we look at the the crude oil situation, as we talked about earlier, for guys joining us late, there's no hope really right now and no signs no yellow peelbacks happening there's no breaching of that 3754 area and why is that so important as i go back into my future section i'm gonna go up to w there's there's no yellow peelbacks happening here all right so can you nibble and play around with this on the day trading side a lot of people are doing that right now you got to think of that and as the crude oil keeps going lower they've got to cover or a lot of day traders have to cover and they have to cover especially before the close of the day because you got margin requirements happening on guys with small amounts of money in their accounts and things like that and i know you know what i'm talking about so there's not a lot of long-term turnaround features happening in crude oil right now and uh, we'll know when that happens by way of a new profile attempting to appear John, you're welcome, but uh, I hope I hope I'm not confusing anybody. On some of, on some of the on some of the S and P talk that I've been giving, I mean, I, I may have you know kind of said, okay, well, I've been wrong. Uh, there, there's been clear cut signs to short this. Um, we've talked about that. Some of the breath crossovers that started happening and started getting heavy below this 2081 area now in the March contract have been pretty significant, but uh, I'm waiting for more longer-term inflection points to be hit myself. And we'll talk about that a little bit more when I get back to the break. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see next on TFNN. On the long-term weekly breath and and you know we've got a high vix environment right now there's no question about it we talked about 2045 yesterday and the day before and probably the day before that and just the volatility around it and i didn't feel like there was a huge amount of edge there you know i mean we've got some things that we keyed off of off 2089 on the short side we talked about the next stop down would be probably 2045 so, so we started playing around with it um and, and just, and still it figured itself out um and, you know, that that key reversal around 2089, that run up when I was in London and the comeback below and then the retest and the breath started converting over and some of that middle ground evaporating. That's what I want to get into here is right now, as you can see, there's there's a lot of conversion to the middle ground, not out of the middle ground on the long term right now. And that's what concerns me, because even though we're in a high VIX environment and, you know, you, this this weekly is going to have a lot more play in it. Um, you know, there's something to read into this here. And as you see that middle ground, and this is real time, which this is not waiting for a week to change. This changes immediately based on the numbers. I mean, we don't have the conversion out of the middle ground and dumping into those other profiles down below. And there's not as, I'm sorry, there's not a big, it's as big a tug of war here happening. It's basically saying on the long term, the stocks are relatively balanced, and and I and I know you guys don't want to hear that. Who are like mega short in your mind right now? But 
it's a fact and uh, it's something to pay attention to. Have we had some trading opportunities in that some of that conversion into the middle ground? Yes, based on some of the information that we've been talking about on the dailies. But these are, you know, these are trader triggers here. I mean, you know, a lot of these we talk about are short term or relatively short term for the long term investor. You know, all we've done really is come off all time highs and breach the unfair highs really of, you know, the December contract. And now we're just kind of sitting smack dab in the middle of a really balanced long term market situation here. Are we in danger of 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 catching a, a little bit of a breakdown technically on our dailies? Yes. Can you save some money? Um as these things break down below dailies and possibly below 2000, I think that's the really, really big, big number right now. Yeah. Um, but all things considered, the long-term guy is still putting along and uh, has been doing so for the last six years. So that's what I want you guys to keep in mind. I mean, this is not the hell. The world's not going to hell in a handbasket and all doing what it's doing and the market actually not reacting as badly as it probably should have been. Um, you know, Trump's scary enough. I mean, in his own way, uh, you know, the, the higher his his value gets on the polls, that could be another another indicator altogether that they could be freaking the market out. But all things considered, this is not exactly that bad. And um, you've got to be willing to step in and just trade the technicals. And this is one of them right now. All right. So as John said earlier, managing the risk is the name of this game. And it's. You know, we try to provide a roadmap to try to pick the battles, but it's your job. It doesn't put the stops in. So, you know, losing two out of every three trades, believe it or not, is is actually a lot of systems out there, automated trading systems, are winning 30 to 40 percent of the time, but they manage the risk properly and they come out a big winner. So put your stops in, guys, when you get to these areas. Pick your uncle spot. Hopefully get your risk reward right and uh, have a good day trading today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.